1 Kings chapter 10, in verse 4, I'll give you the short version. It says, when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he had built, say the house that we have built. I mean, we're building a great house for the Lord. We're building a great house for the Lord. When the queen had seen all the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, it, it says here that when she saw all those things, there was no spirit in her. Now, another version of this story says that when she saw all these things, her breath was taken away. That's kind of how I feel every time I come to freedom. And in verse 6, it says, Then she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. Now, this is the part that's pretty heavy. However, I did not believe the words until I came and I saw with my own eyes. And look at what she says. And indeed, the half was not told me. What makes this so heavy is that she had heard of the wisdom of Solomon and the greatness of the house of God. And she decided to experience it for herself. And she traveled for seven years to get there. This is heavy. Some of you have been praying for family members for one year, for two years, for five years, but I want you to build up your anticipation because your prayers are not in vain. And eventually your children and your family members are gonna find themselves right here in the house that we built. She said, I heard of how great the house was. I heard the rumors. Look at all these rumors surrounding me every day. She said, but when I walked into this place, I didn't even know the half of it. I had heard it was beautiful. I had heard that there was wisdom, knowledge, and revelation and flowing. But it wasn't until I walked in and experienced it for myself that got a full picture of what God was doing in the life of the people at Freedom Christian Center. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, you don't know the half. You don't know the half of what I've been through. You don't know the half of the struggles that I had to get through to get to the house of God. You don't know the half of the miracle working power of Jesus breaking me out Come on, somebody. The reason I love this story so much is because as a pastor, I've, I've learned a few things about the house of God. I really felt led to kind of share a little bit of my experience with you this morning. Is that all right? You know, believe it or not, I've been serving the Lord now for 30 years. Crazy, right? Oh, that's a long time. <laughs> I've been pastoring now for 20 years. Jeez, good Lord. I'm a grandpa now. Ooh. And I've learned some stuff. When I look at this story, it really reaches out and stands out to me because you gain experience as a leader. You gain experience in working with people because you recognize that God hasn't called us just to get people saved, but he's called us to break people through. Break people through. We serve a God that will take you from the guttermost to the uttermost. He will. There's levels. Tell your neighbor, there are levels. There are levels to serving God. It's breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. 
I don't know who I came to talk to this morning, but I came all the way from San Diego to tell you he's taking you higher. He's taking you higher. And I know some of you can feel it because you're going through warfare. Come on now. Who could be real? But let me tell you something about warfare. Warfare is just simply transition. That's all it is. Why am I fighting? Why am I going through this? Like, he's just transitioning you from one level to another level to another level. Come on, somebody. And there's no greater blessing for a pastor than not just to see his people get saved and committed, but to see his people break through. How many can't wait to see your brother or sister break through? Can't wait to see it. There's no greater joy than to watch people grow. And what stands out to me in this scripture is verse 8. That when the Queen of Sheba came after a seven-year journey to see the house of God, she noticed the beauty of it all. But what leaped out and grabbed me was in verse 8, when she's speaking to Solomon and she says this, she says, happy are your men. Happy are these who are serving. Happy are the people who stand before you continually. Imagine for a moment that in the midst of such excellence, what stood out to her was the joy in the people. The joy. And, and I want you to know that joy is God's way of working. God's work, when it's God's work is done God's way, it will never lack for God's supply when there's joy. Somebody say joy. There's power in joy. You know that when that people are happy, your unsafe family members won't walk to church, they'll run the church. She said, happy are your men, happy are your women, happy are the people serving at the door, happy are the children's worker, happy are the people on the worship team, happy are the people making coffee, happy, come on somebody, there's something about a happy church. There's something about a church that has discovered the joy of the Lord is my strength. Some of us need to get happy. Even if you've only been here a couple of times, some of us need to get happy. I'll tell you, God will work through a grumpy leader, but he'd rather work through a happy one. You know why? Because happy people do a better job. Well, I could just preach that for an hour. Happy dads do a better job. Happy moms do a better job. Happy couples do a better job. Happy young people do a better job. Happy employees do a better job. Proverbs 29 verse 2 says, when the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. And I think we've got a reason to be happy this morning because we should never, hear me now, we should never forget where we came from. Because we weren't always happy. Don't look at me like that. We weren't always happy. We know what it is to be defeated. We know what it is to be down. We know what, see, some of you look at me right now like, speak it, preacher, because I'm there right now. <laughs> we weren't always happy. Our marriage wasn't always working. Our kids were, aren't always as good as they were. But we decided to put our trust in Jesus, and he took us to another level. Come on. Come on, somebody. What is revival? What is revival? Revival is you go down weeping, you come up rejoicing. That's what the Lord has done at Freedom Christians. Come on, somebody. Shout if the Lord brought you out of anything. 
The scripture that God has given me in season is found in Psalms chapter 40 where David said, you put a new song in my heart. He says, you pulled me out of the miry pit. Has anybody come out of a pit this year? Does anybody know what it is for God to pull you out of the mire, put a song in your heart, and put you in the choir? I think we've got a reason to rejoice. We've got a reason to sing. We've got a reason to worship. We got a reason to praise him. Come on, somebody. Happy are your men. Happy are your servants. Happy are the people of the house of God. Oh, I feel a spirit of joy in this place. I feel like the joy that's on you is jumping on your neighbor. You've got a reason to be grateful. It was the Lord that delivered you. It was the Lord that set us free. Come on. I'm so happy. Clap along if you feel. And like a room without a room. I'm so happy. Joy is God's way of working. Never forget where you came from. You know what I've learned? He said, Pastor, what could you teach me this morning? in your Christian experience with God. You know what I've learned? I've learned that the longer that I've planted myself in the house of the Lord, I've learned that the longer that I've been faithful, I've learned that the longer that I've been committed, here's one, I've learned that the longer I've been loyal to the soil, The longer I've been planted, the longer I've been faithful, the longer I've been committed, and the longer I've been loyal to the soil, the greater I have prospered. There's no better place to be planted. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 92, verse 12, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted, put your hand on your heart and say, I am planted. <laughs> Woo, see how powerful that is? See how powerful it is when you plant yourself in the house of God? He says, they shall flourish in the courts of their God. And I love this part in verse 14. It, it, and it's going to give some of y'all hope because I'm 49. I'm about to be 50. I know I don't look like it, huh? but I'm getting there. When Miguel told me I was, he was 50, I felt a little bit happier, amen. He looks younger than me. But it says they shall bear fruit in old age. They shall bear fruit. Come on, if you're 45. <laughs> if it's a little bit hard to get out of bed in the morning, you got to use your leg to pull yourself out. Come on, somebody. You can understand that even in your older age, you're still going to be fruitful. You're going to be fruitful at 50. You're going to be fruitful at 60. You're going to be fruitful at 7. Come on, somebody. God's not done with us yet. He's just getting started. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. And I know young people, you're judging us right now. You're judging me. You're like, yeah, you go on, go on, old head. Shout for your fruit. Well, I'm going to go ahead and shout for my fruit. But you'll have a reason to shout too because the Bible says you shall be fresh and flourishing. You shall be fresh and flourishing. I think every believer ought to be fresh. Ain't nobody, don't ask me, I'm just so fresh. You ought to be fresh. You ought to have a smile on your face. There ought to be life coming out of your mouth. There ought to be joy coming out of you. You ought to, come on, somebody. Your branches shouldn't be dead. They should be alive and green. And come on, somebody. We're dealing with a generation that's depressed. We're dealing with a generation that's defeated. We're, we're, we're dealing with a generation, and I'm not talking about you, but out there, a generation that's in conflict, a generation that doesn't know up from down, a generation that doesn't know where they belong. And I came to declare they're living under a lie. 
What the Bible says is if you plant yourself in the house of the Lord, you shall be fresh, you shall be flourishing, you shall be thriving. We are not called to survive. We're called to thrive in the house of God. The longer I've been planted, the more I thrive. The longer I give, the more I reap. The longer I stay faithful and loyal, the more God does in my life. I wonder if there's anybody here today, you're making a decision. You're going to plant yourself and you're going to prosper. You're going to prosper. See, the reason you need to plant yourself is because your life is a seed. Your life is a seed. I look out here, I don't see people. All I see is seeds. I don't see people. I see seeds. And what makes a seed powerful is the potential of the seed. You don't even know who you're sitting next to. You don't even know, you may know, you know, well, I've been married a guy a long time, I know him. Okay, but you got to start seeing him as a seed. But there's going to be some people around you, you don't even know who you're sitting next to. You could be sitting next to the next tech giant. You could be sitting next to the next church planter or pastor. You could be sitting next to the, great, uh, 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 the next great musician or songwriter. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even know. Come on, somebody. Samuel went to anoint a king and he saw seven brothers at Jesse's house and the Lord says, I'm not with any single one of them. He says, man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at the seed of the heart. God looks at what's inside of that person. Come on, somebody. You don't know who is sitting in front of you and you don't know who's sitting behind you, but I came to declare to you there's a seed that's about to come alive in this church. Woo, touch your neighbor and tell him, don't be discouraged. You're, you're a seed. You're a seed. Everybody wants to have success, but nobody wants to be a seed. Everybody wants to be famous on Instagram, but nobody wants to be a seed. Everybody wants it. Can I go there? Is this okay? <laughs> I want to come back. Everybody wants to be a YouTube star, but nobody wants to be a seed. I know what it is to be a seed. I know what it is to be a seed. I'm not a seed no more, but I know what it is to be a seed. I know what it is to be buried under some dirt. I know what it is to feel overlooked. I know what it <laughs> I know what it feels like to be pushed aside. I know what it feels like for people not to notice me when I walk into a room. But I let God start working on me. I said, Lord, I know you've got a plan. I know you've got a destiny. I, 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 I think it's time that we raise up a generation that lets God build their character before he builds their influence. What would happen if we had some young people that let God build their character? Let God build them on the inside out. You look good on the outside, baby, but what's happening on the inside? <laughs> Who loves these types of messages? I got a question. Can you go through some fire? Ask your neighbor, can you go through some fire? The same fire that will ignite you is the same fire that will multiply you and grow you and expand you. Your life is a seed. I, I remember not too, well, some years ago, we went to the Sequoia National Park. Who's ever been to Sequoia National Park? Yeah, isn't it beautiful? Did you see the big tree, the main one? The General Sherman, I think it's called. 
General Lee or something like that. Yeah, it's just, some, it's just big, General something. I mean, this tree's so big, you know, the, the trunk is just the size of half of this room. The branches themselves are like trees. And the guide told us, he says, you know, if this tree were to be cut down and, you know, broken down, you could build 2,100 houses with this one tree. That's heavy. There's power in the seed. There's power in a seed that allows... God to put it through a process. And I feel like I, you know, I'm, it's the last service of the day. I feel like I could say this. Can I say it? All right, all right, all right, all right. I feel like some of y'all need to stop complaining. <laughs> stop complaining, man. High is hot. I'm going through the fire. Ouch. You're going through the fire. Say good. God is getting your seed ready. God is preparing you. God is building you up. You know, we have a lot of the wild, wildfires in our state. You know that very well. But it's very difficult to burn down these sequoia trees. I mean, it's not just that they're so big. But it's the one tree in the forest that isn't afraid from the fire, but it benefits from the fire. And the reason is, is because on its branches, it carries these acorns or little growths that have baby seeds inside of it. And when the fire gets real hot, the fire can't burn down the tree, but it, what, what it does do is it removes those acorns from the branches and those branches fall, I mean, those acorns fall to the ground and the heat opens them. And when it opens, all the seeds in the acorn get into the ground. And what do they do? They just produce more trees. The sequoia tree says, bring on the fire. And that's what some of you got to learn how to do before the end of this year. You got to learn how to say, bring on the fire. Bring on the process. Hold up. Watch this. And then look the devil in the eye and say, devil, we don't die. We multiply. Continue to let God do what he's doing and watch your family start coming. Watch your loved ones start coming. Watch your disciples start raising up. Come on, somebody. Get ready because your season's about to shift. Your life is a seed. And every seed needs to be planted. Say, I'm planted. Every seed needs to be stretched. Say, I'm being stretched. Say, out your amen. Your life is a seed. And once God stretches you, then your life becomes, look at how powerful, your life becomes a sign and a wonder. It's crazy. It's, an, it's amazing. There's going to be a time in the days to come where all of your preparation and all of your planning and all your perseverance is going to show up at the same time. It's going to show up. You say, well, that sounds highly motivational, Pastor. Give me a scripture. Okay. You ready? Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Don't think for a moment that God doesn't bottle up every tear. 
Don't think for a moment that God is not stacking up every prayer. Don't think for a moment that God is not keeping a record of every time, every moment you spend with him, every time you attend church, every time you, come on somebody, rain only matters to people that got a seed in the ground. The Lord is getting you ready. Your success season is coming. Your success season is coming. How do I know? Because it's all over the Bible. It's all over the Bible. You know that even the backsliders are coming home? You know that? You know that those kids that were raised in church and they got of a certain age and they wanted to start going out and doing their thing, guess what? They're coming home too. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what? When God first put this thought in me some years ago, it wasn't out of this scripture. It was out of the story of the prodigal son. Because the prodigal son went to his father and he said, give me my inheritance. He had a right to half of the inheritance they shared with his brother. He said, give me my inheritance. And like a loving father, he said, you know, I'm sure he tried to deter me. He said, here, go. Go ahead. Do you want to go? And the Bible says he took his inheritance out and he wasted it on wine, women, and song. He got jiggy, basically. <laughs> he just let it all go. Can I hear an amen? He just had a whole meltdown. Who knows someone right now that's in the middle of a meltdown? It got so bad for him that the Bible says that he was eating from the pig trough. With the pigs. Fighting with pigs over food. And what's amazing to me in that moment, and this is so powerful, because the Bible says that the prodigal son said to himself, the most powerful conversation you will ever have is with yourself. This is heavy. What did he say to himself? Watch. Watch. Happy are your men. Happy are your women. He said, even the slaves in my father's house are eating better than me. And then he says the most important thing. I will. He's talking to himself. Some of you need to have a little talk with yourself. He said, I will arise and go where? To my father's. Let's, come on, somebody. There's something about a happy house. There's something about a house full of joy. There's something about a house that is full of hope and vision and life. Come on, somebody. Hey! Even my father's servants are eating better than me. This is heavy. People are watching you. People are noticing you. If people are paying attention to you, you ought to be paying attention to what God is doing in you. You, you ought to be paying attention. If people are paying attention to how you come to the house of God, they're paying attention to how you give, they're paying attention to how you reap, they're paying attention to how you minister, they're paying attention to your marriage, they're paying attention to how you raise your kids, you got them in the school, come on somebody. They're saying, hey, if God can do it for them, why can't God do it for me? But here's what I believe, and I'm out of time. Did you catch this? Here's what I believe. If you're going to enter into your season of success, you've got to be willing to let God plant you and let him stretch you. Stretch me. Bend me, Lord. He'll never break you, but he will bend you. 
He will bend you and say, Lord, just say, Lord, bend me to your will. Bend me to your desires. Oh, I've been out of whack. Put me back together and bend me, Lord, and do what you desire to do in my life. Oh, come on and shout to the Lord if you're ready for God to bend. He loves us enough to bend us into the shape we're supposed to be. Don't believe the lie. Don't believe the lie. You won't, even though your parents were on drugs, you won't be on drugs. The Lord's able to deliver you this morning, right now. It doesn't matter what kind of background. If God can deliver me from four generations of alcoholics, guess what? God can do it for you. Nothing's too hard for God. He can make you happy. Depression. Depression. We break that lie today. You are the son of the most high. You are sons and daughters of the king. You got royal blood flowing through your veins. You've been seated in heavenly places. Come on, somebody. You're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from victory. You're not fighting for a promise. You're fighting with a promise. You are a child of the living God. You have no reason to be defeated. You can pick up your head. God has given you a house. God has given you a people. Come on. I'm going to go home right now, but I want to leave some things with you. We are a people. God has a people. Look at the people around you. Those are God's people. Those aren't your people. Those are God's people. God has a people. You can call them an army. God has an army of love. God has an army of freedom. Guess what? They're all right here this morning. These are God's people. And if he chose you, if he chose you, if he chose you and he called you, let him work on you. Let him build you. Let him shape you. Let him make you into what he desires to be. Stretch me. Stretch me. Stretch me. You can do it, Lord. My life is not my own. To you, I belong. I like to sing. I give myself. Yeah, I like they got it. To you, I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. You feel that? Let me stretch. One more thing. David didn't become king overnight. He let God stretch him. He stretched him in that shepherd's field. And then one day he's on his way to deliver some quesadillas to his brothers. And there's this giant mocking the army and everybody was afraid. 40 days and 40 nights, this giant saying, someone come out and fight me. Everybody's shaking in their boots. David shows up on the scene. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine defying the armies of the living God? Right? You know it, right? And then he says, is there not a cause? Is there not a reason to fight, is there not a reason to let God make me, shape me, mold me, bend me, prepare me? Is there not a cause? They said, what are you going to do, young man? He says, well, you don't understand. When I was in my father's shepherd field and a lion or a bear came in to snatch one of the sheep, grabbed that lion by the beard and slammed him down. He said, I defeated the lion and I defeated the bear. He says, this Philistine will be just like that. The God that gave me the victory in the shepherd field is going to give me the victory in the battlefield. And so, you know, he, you, know, you got to get a rock and a sling and he flung it and boom, went down. 
And that was the miracle. But you know, that wasn't the real miracle. We look at that battle and say, what a miracle. This young boy takes down this big eight foot giant, but that wasn't the real miracle. You wanna know what the real miracle was? The real miracle was that when David took down the giant, the army of Israel came back to life. Don't miss this. They were free for 40 days and for 40 nights. They kept defying the armies of God. Come and fight me. Nobody wanted to fight. King Saul shrunk back. Everybody was afraid. But it took a seed that was processed to show up on the scene and say, I've been here before. I've been in this battle before. And when he took that giant down, all of a sudden, all his homeboys and all his homegirls felt like fighting. When you take that giant down, your family's going to get in the fight. Your friends are going to get in the fight. Oh, come on, lift up those hands and say, my life is not my own. My life. Stretch me. Come on, let those hands and say, My life is not my own. To you I be I give myself. I give myself. I give myself away. I give myself away. Oh, come on, that's it. Oh. to use you oh come on yeah come on sing it with all your heart let those tears begin to flow come on your life is a seed my life is not my own Build my life, stretch my life. My life is not my own. To you I belong. Come on, give it to him. I give myself. I give myself. Hey, I give myself. started this morning Just to people say, I give myself away. 
I give myself away. Oh, so you. My life is not my own. Lift your hands all over this place. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Can you, in your words, just begin to thank Him right now? We thank you, Jesus. So, you're yeah, right. We say yes. 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 Wait to see what God does. I can't wait. We ain't seen nothing yet, church. I love you. God bless you.